Greetings, friend. I'll show you how to solve this puzzle, Ursa Major, by Shy. And I'll teach you all my Sudoku tips, tricks, and strategies as I do it. Click on the link below if you want to try it yourself. And with that, it's solving time. I have solved this puzzle before. And I will tell you, it was tough, difficult, but I found a logical way to get through it. I'm going to show you my tips and tricks on how I did it. Uh, I got Hodoku up because I wanted to do the... Uh, modern software approach because this is going to involve some chaining and that's what I found to kind of solve this. Uh, the unique kind of with the way these digits were spread out, I first looked around the edges and I focused in these columns uh, in rows where there's more, multiple digits and I was looking for like a firework type thing. I was looking for an almost lock set. Couldn't quite find all that. The first thing I could really find that was helpful is let's focus on the can at six here. All right, I'm highlighting all the sixes. And what you may or may not see is that there is a swordfish. If you're looking down columns uh, 3, 4, and 9, and I'll highlight that, the digit 6, the can at 6, is in the same three, living in the same three rows, rows 2, 5, and 8. What this means is we have a swordfish, or a 3 by 3. It can be 2 or 3 in each, each column, uh, but basically you can eliminate all of the sixes that are not in pink along rows two, five, and eight. I can get rid of this six, this six, this six, this six, and this six, and this six. And I've showed a few swordfish puzzles recently, uh, but the basic gist is the reason why you can't put a six like right here and you can eliminate is if I put a six right there, you're going to eliminate these two sixes, right? Boom. Um, these two spots can't be a six anymore. So then you have to put a six here and here, and then there would be no place left to put a six in column nine and you'd break the puzzle we don't want that to happen so that's why you can automatically make those eliminations once you see the swordfish and of course the swordfish could have worked if you looked at rows one four and nine and and you solved upwards into columns this swordfish works both ways so that's the first thing i saw was the swordfish and that eliminates and cleans up some of these candidates we will need that later on in this puzzle not right this second now the the key to this puzzle um, you'll see there's a lot of given ones, threes, eights, and the end some sixes. We used those sixes already, so the ones, threes, and eights are now the key. And again, the big key to this puzzle is you have to solve this cell right here. you got to figure out what this cell is. This is the cell that if you push on it hard enough, the puzzle will break. Believe it or not. It may not look like that, but that's why. And then the other thing is with these 1s, 3s, and 8s, even though they're not contained in this block, block 4, this is where the pushing is going to happen and the logical chains are going to happen that's going to help us solve right here. Okay, uh, I kind of went through a phase a few months ago where I did a lot of alternate inference chain type 1 type solves. Uh, the basic logic is the same as like an XY chain, and I'll put a link to that tutorial at the end of this video. So I want you to watch this, but if you're still not sure what I'm doing, go check that out. But the idea with alternate inference chains, or AICs, type 1, is that you're going to look and go, hey, this is, if you know one thing is false, if it's, if we look at a cell and go, okay, you know, this cell, this can't be an 8, then if you have just one other 8 in this column, and we do, this is false, then that has to be an 8. That is a strong link. And a weak link would be the kind of the other way around. If this was, uh, actually we look with this, uh, like the nines. If this was a nine, then all, you know, these would be false. These can't be nines. That's a weak link because there's more than just two nines in this column. Um, if there's just two of it, so like with the eights, it can be a strong or a weak link. Uh, they work both ways. But the weak links can only work as weak links. And you have to alternate those as you're solving the puzzle. And that's kind of like a... Uh, if and and what happens is you basically know that the beginning and the end of that chain they got to be one of the two candidates you're talking about and that makes us helps us eliminate based on the, what's the, the beginning cell into the end cell it'll help us do elimination doing a lot of talking let me kind of help you out here so let's look at the ones what we care about and what i do i call this the christmas tree technique i came up with it i get to call it what i want is Anywhere you see a strong link, you're going to make those colors. So the ones that use orange, 
So this is a strong leak because there's only two ones in the row and the block. This is a strong leak. There's only two ones here in column seven. This one and this one have a strong to each other. Realize these two cells are not strongly linked because there's this extra one. But these two are, so i got to keep that in mind. It is a limitation of this coloring. Okay, so I, yep, and then right here. So I've just colored wherever I see strong links. That's going to help us out with the ones. Now let's look at the threes. And um, I'll use pink for the threes. All right, you see a strong link with these threes. You see a strong link with these threes. And what you'll notice, if you look across row seven, anytime you get a strong link in the same uh, row or column like this, that means that they are uh, a hidden pair. So, you know, the one and three are living in the same two spots. So you can get rid of these, these extra cannons right there. And that will help us with later on in the puzzle. So you have a five, seven naked pair and then a one, three uh, hidden pair that we were able to solve. All right, where else with the threes? That's a three, that's a three, that's a three. Any other strong link threes? Nope. And then I talked about the eights, right? So that's the last thing here. Well, also keep pink. Uh, basically, for the threes and the eights, I use the uh, that pink color. And this is a strong link down here. These are strong link. Kind of show you how the strong links work. All right, the other way we can get a strong link is with by value cell. So now I'm showing my BVCs. Everything that's green right now, it means there's just two candidates in there. And with a strong link, you know, if this is not an 8, that's false, then this has to be a 9, right? So they have a strong link with each other. This is, this is not a 9, it has to be an 8. This is how we're going to figure out what's in this cell right here. Just need to use uh, these strong links. I'm not going to do all the other links for all the other candidates because we don't need it. We don't need it. So let's start right here in this cell here. Let me go purple. All right, this 8 is strong link to this 9, right? So strong link to the 9, weak to this 9, because there's multiple 9s, strong to this 1. Weak to this 1, which is actually, a, yeah, no, it's a weak link, strong to this 1, because there's only two 1s right here. Weak to this 3, strong to this 3. Weak to this 8, within a cell, if there's multiples, they have a weak link, strong to this 8. So, we started here with this 8. Strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak, strong. And then this 8 on a strong link. That means if, if this is not an 8, that has to be an 8. Otherwise, this is an 8. That's what the alternate inference chain just told us. So we can eliminate an 8 from any cell that sees both of these. Well, guess what? As soon as we eliminate this 8 right here, since it sees both, and I colored it, that means this is part of a strong link. So we're going to be able to solve a cell. Which cell can we solve? This one right here in the purple. Remember I said this is the key. Since this is not an 8, there's only one place left for there to be an 8 along block 5, row 6. And it's right here. So once we solve this for an 8, our life's going to get a lot easier. All right, let me get rid of the colors. Let me get rid of that. And here you go. So now that's an 8. And now you're like, okay, Timberlake, you solve for an 8. There's still two 8s there. I don't see a lot of big difference here. Well, if you notice right here, we can actually solve that for 7, that's for a 9, that for a 4. Uh, with the modern software approach, finding naked singles is pretty easy. And so we'll take advantage of that. But we're not done yet. Uh, you can look around, and you might still get stuck for a little bit here. So I want to show you something else where the modern software approach comes in really handy. So one example is you can look right here at the ones and the fives, and you can see the ones and fives are a naked pair. So you can eliminate that five right there, and there's no other ones and fives across. You can see that. But what I want here is notice the difference or the similarities between the sixes and the sevens. Hopefully you notice in one of these rows, the sixes and sevens are in the same two cells. Do you see that? Okay, if you don't see it, it's right here. Those two cells. Actually, let's make them. So if you look across row four, where can a 6, 7 be? It can only be in those two cells. There's no other place for 6, 7. This is another hidden pair. Because I use the modern software approach, it's a hidden pair. It's a little bit harder to see. So I wanted to point that out. That's one way you can find it using this modern software approach. And this is the other key. Once you find this hidden pair, now the solve gets much easier. 
Um, and one of the reasons I'll, I'll show you is look right here. Now this is a naked pair of 6-7, and that's, you know, the hidden pair is not a naked pair of 6-7. Six, seven. So 6-7, six, 6-7, seven, six, seven, we can get rid of the 7 right there, we get rid of the 7 right there, and you'll see the puzzle is now going to start coming together because I can do naked singles here and we'll be able to find and solve the rest of Ursa Major. Very tough puzzle. I uh, really enjoyed it. I, I would love, and I'm going to talk to Shy and kind of get more of the what the intended logic was. I think it had to be around these, this 8 because that's what I found and made it go. I just wasn't sure what the exact technique was uh, other than what I did to make this happen. Uh, you plug it through a solver, it came up with a lot harder techniques actually than what I just showed you. It wanted you to do multiple swordfish patterns, a uh, uh, little bit more complicated loops. So I found you the quickest loop to the quickest solve, and then a couple of hidden pairs, and we were able to get right through that solve. So that's a five, four, five, five, and that's a one. If you like this puzzle, check out this other really cool puzzle by Shy that I solved. Thank you so much, Shy, for letting me feature your puzzles on my channel. Uh, you're an amazing setter, super creative. I really love this, and I, I love seeing uh, when you have new puzzles so I can go out and solve those. Don't forget to buy me a coffee link. Thank you so much for watching.